Hello, and welcome back to the studio. I'm Dr. Wiggo, and today my Acasis Thunderbolt 5 SSD enclosure finally arrived. Although, it turns out there's what they call an updated version, which I have also ordered and which will be here like in a week or so, but I didn't want to wait. And I also got a Sabrent Rocket 5 10,000 megabytes per second SSD, but I had mentioned in an earlier video that I got a Western Digital 850X SSD. Well, it just so happens I also have another enclosure. Now this isn't Thunderbolt 5, this is old school. This is the USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C. So we'll try it with this. No one cares about this one. We care about this one. So first I'm gonna put the Western Digital in here because this is only 7,200 megabytes per second. So we'll see how that does in there on Thunderbolt 5. But then we'll put this one in here. And then we'll put this one in here, into this one, the ROG Strix Arion from the Republic of Gamers has RGB. Yeah. I'll put the eight terabyte SSD in here for now. And then when I get the updated version, I don't know what the update is. They don't really explain it very well on their website. But when I get the updated version, I will move the Sabrent, the 10,000, megabytes per second to the new one and I'll probably put this into here and yeah, I'll jiggle them around. I have lots of SSDs and with the Mac mini, you need them. Well, I'm not going to explain why I bought it because y'all know, y'all know why I bought it. I wanted fast external storage for my Mac mini. So we'll just get straight to the unboxing and then I will go downstairs to the office and I will test them out and then I'll come back up here and show you the results, tell you how it went. I'm not gonna set up cameras down there just for plugging things in and running a few disk drive tests. We'll start with the important one, the Acasis enclosure. Now I have seen videos and people testing this and apparently to the Mac, this doesn't look like a Thunderbolt 5. It's a USB 4, I don't know. It's 80 gigabytes per second or gigabit, I don't know. It's just your normal little SSD enclosure. Now, it has a fan, which will come in handy for keeping the heat down. And apparently it's toolless. You just pop this off the back somehow. There you go. And it pops down in there. Comes with a high-speed cable, says Thunderbolt 5 right on it. Comes with a thermal pad and some little plastic, again, toolless screw holders for the SSD. When I bought the enclosure, they also had a bundle for an $8 covering case. I don't know how to open this. So this is the carrying case. It's blue, so there's a case that's on the top. Oh, it has a little, I guess, place in here so you can, well, the, well you have to, have to coil that cable up a lot more to get it in there. But see, then this will go in here under this little thing. It was a dollar. Well, let's put the important drive in here first. By the way, I also got off of Amazon, I got some uh, additional thermal pads because I didn't know what I'd need. Oh, it's very fancy. Fancy little box. So this is the four terabyte Rocket 5. So we drop that in there. Also came with a little booklet. But I know how this works. I need to put this oh, it comes with two thermal pads. I'm going to go ahead and put one of these thermal pads on. This SSD is either going to live in this enclosure or in the, what they call the updated one, which I will be getting shortly. Now this is the ROG Strix Arion enclosure, which comes with a little tool of some sort. 
This one's toolless. Apparently this one is not. It comes with some sort of strap. And I guess a rubber outside shield. And a USB-A to USB-C cable. And a USB-C to USB-C cable. And a quick installation guide. A user manual. Again, I may never use this one again, but I didn't know a cases was going to update this, this so fast. Well, I'm going to have to look at the installation guide. Okay, a little teeny tiny tool. Oh yeah, and then this pops up. Okay, I'm going to lose this. Now the Western Digital, I got I got an 8 terabyte, so I, this is for more storage space. Excuse me, I need to put on my glasses. This is a screw. This is not toolless. So I already, I'm already liking the Acasis enclosure better. I'm not liking this one. I couldn't get it locked in on the one side, and then I locked in on the other, but now I can't get it out. To put the cover back on, you have to use the little tool again. Yeah, I'm not liking this one. Yeah, see, now it's locked in. So I have an 8 terabyte in the Arion, and the 4 terabyte in here. Okay. So now I'm going to go downstairs and try these things out and run some speed tests. And then I'll come back up here and show you how it went. The next day. Disappointed. I thought this would be an easy video. I'd put some SSDs into these enclosures. I'd run downstairs. I'd run some speed tests. I'd come back up here and tell you about it. No, that's not how it went. You know that's not how it went. It's the next day. I was going to come back up like an hour later. Yeah, no. I learned a lot about USB and Thunderbolt and all sorts of stuff, and which I will now share with you so that you don't have to go through this. Well, first we can eliminate one thing right away. The ROG is, don't, don't waste your money. It says right on the box, USB 3.2 Gen 2, which automatically means it's not going to be that fast. And it's not. In fact, it's not at all. With the Sabrent rocket in here, which is a 10,000 megabytes per second SSD, I got 980. Not even 1,000. Not even 10% of the capability. That's on writes. It was 870 on reads. Yeah. On the MacBook Pro, it was even worse, because I tried it out in there, too. It was 567 writes and 856 reads. And here's a fun little fact. It freezes on the PC. I mean, it the, it gets, gets it starts the speed test and then just stops and nothing happens. And I don't know what the now it is a two and a half three year old PC. I mean, it was it has a thirty ninety. It was it was it was state of the art at the time. It was like almost ten thousand dollars. But these things move fast, so this thing was just relatively useless. Which again, to be expected. This is intended for. Gen 1, Gen 2 type NVMe SSDs. So I'll just get that out of the way and not talk about it ever again. To tell you the truth, I don't remember buying it when I was coming up to do the video. I found it on the table where I keep all the stuff that comes in. So I don't know when I got it. It was a while ago. Let's talk about this guy. The Acasis. Also not the best. The reason to get Thunderbolt 5 is for the really high speed SSDs. The Sabrent Rocket is one of them. If you put the Sabrent rocket in here on the Mac Mini, it won't mount. It just doesn't appear. It doesn't ask you, do you want to install this accessory? Nothing, nothing sees it. It's just not there. Same thing on the MacBook Pro. On the PC with either of the SSDs in here, you get a power surge. This thing tries to draw more power than my USB-C ports on my PC will give it. So it, I, I get a power surge and it won't mount. Maybe that's what's happening with the with the rocket on the Mac Mini. They don't mount. Luckily, I had bought the Western Digital 8 terabyte, which is like a 7,200 megabytes per second drive. It works in here. The internal SSD on the Mac Mini is 6,100 writes and 5,000 reads. The Western Digital in here, it was 4,500 writes and 5,500 reads, so faster on the reads, but slower on the writes. But that was with XFAT, because I was thinking I could use it to move files back and forth. But remember, it gets a power surge. 
even with the Western Digital in here, and it will not mount on the PC, so this is not going to be possible to move it back and forth. Let's look at this with the Western Digital hard drive formatted differently. So, like I said, in XFED, it's 4,500 writes and 5,500 reads. But in APFS, the Mac-only file system, 6,000 writes and 5,600 reads. So almost as fast as writing to the internal SSD and faster reading. This is going to be a great little drive for use with the Mac Mini because it gets really decent speeds and 8 terabytes. And with the fan, it's not going to overheat. It's not going to slow down. So we're in pretty good shape that way. Oh, now on the MacBook Pro, this is not such a handy drive to have because you get 3,000 reads and 3,000 writes, which is roughly half of what you get on the Mac Mini. But of course, the Mac Mini is Thunderbolt 5, 80 gigabits per second. And the MacBook Pro is Thunderbolt 4, which is 40 gigabits per second. Half the speed. Well, look, look, we got basically a little less than half the speed. Thunderbolt 5 makes a huge difference. By the way, just for comparison, the internal drive, the internal SSD on the MacBook Pro is 6,600 writes and 5,200 reads. This looks bad in comparison. Now, all these problems I was having with the Rocket, it wouldn't mount on the Mac Mini. The, the Rocket 5 did mount in the ROG on the MacBook Pro, but again, 567 writes and 856 reads, which is just dreadful. But of course, that's that USB 3.2 speed. Couldn't use it at all on the PC. Well, so I was wondering, well, is there something wrong with, with the SSD? And so I put the rocket into my PC onto the motherboard, and I got 5,300 reads and 5,300 writes, which is, again, about half of what the thing is supposedly capable of. My motherboard isn't PCIe Gen 5, so it's going to be slower. It doesn't have all the lanes and all that stuff. So 5,300, so, but that meant the SSD was good. So it wasn't the SSD causing the problems, it was this little guy. So my conclusion, this is useful for some drives, for the Gen 4s, maybe the Gen 5s, but you're not gonna get the super fast speed. 6,000 writes and 5,600 reads is, is, again, pretty much on par with the internal SSD. So this is gonna be a good solution with eight terabytes for storing my video files and all that kind of stuff. So I have plenty of room for the channel to grow in the future. Yeah, it could happen. But the good news is, Acasis has an updated version of this, which I have ordered and it has shipped. And so it will be here in a week or two. So I will come back when I get that enclosure and see if it's any different, see what thing. Maybe a video, maybe not. Maybe I'll find something else to put in the video with it. I don't know. A bit of a disappointment, but it performs as advertised if your Thunderbolt port can feed it the power that it needs. Because apparently it draws a lot of power because again, it, it wanted more power than my PC was capable of delivering. Another reason to go Mac. The more I mess with these things, the more I realize that Mac really is the way to go if you're gonna be doing video editing and everything. The Mac Mini is, it, take, it takes longer to render, but it's snappier when you're editing. The editing experience is much better. So, and now with an eight terabyte external drive that's as fast as my internal drive, I think the Mac Mini is gonna work out just fine as my editing machine. And I have a lovely carrying case. I'm never gonna carry it anywhere, but, but if I do, look, I have a lovely carrying case. I can slide it in here. Oh, an important note. The Mac Mini does not think this is a Thunderbolt 5 device. It thinks it's a USB 4 device. If you go down and look at all the stuff, it says USB 4, not Thunderbolt 5. So it's Thunderbolt 5 speed, but it's actually a USB 4 enclosure. And it's not false advertising because you'll notice it says 80 gigabits per second on the box. It does not say Thunderbolt 5 although the product number is TB501, so it was supposed to be Thunderbolt 5. Yeah, nowhere, nowhere on the box does do the words Thunderbolt 5 appear. We'll see when the updated version comes in, maybe that will say Thunderbolt 5 somewhere on the box, or not. So that video will be coming up in a, in a couple of weeks. That's all I got. It's a little pricey, but it's fast. It's under $300. 
And you can get it. They have sales. I mean, it seems like they have a constant 15% off sale. And then, like I said, they sell these with like for a dollar if you buy one of these. So it, you can get a decent deal on it. But again, it's going to be a few hundred dollars. And then, you know, for an eight terabyte drive, that's like another six hundred dollars. So you got like a thousand dollars in here. Wow, that's a lot of money. Uh, unless you look at Apple's eight terabyte upgrade price. Then all of a sudden, this looks cheap. I'm glad I got it. So that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Bye bye. And now I just got to wait for my new enclosure, the updated version to arrive. Thanks for staying to the end. Bye bye.